thanks for joining. Thank you, thank you. Yes, for and also for my leaders, uh, Pastor Tiffany and Pastor Giselle. I thank God for you guys. I thank God for all the leaders, all of my family from KHCC, for your support, for your love. And with that being said, let's jump right in, okay? So today, um, we're going to start, and like I said, an introduction on our brand new series entitled New Beginnings. So let's start. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, verse 18 and 19, it says, Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. For I will do a new thing, and it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. So when I read that passage of scripture, it really encouraged me because it lets me know that God is ready and he's waiting and he's willing to release something new and he's wanting to spring it forth now for our life. But the question is, God is ready to release it. But the question is, are we ready to receive it? Or are we still holding on to former things? Are we holding on to things that used to be? So when I think about new beginnings, I think about a fresh start, right? I think about new opportunities. I think about a new awakening, right? I think about having a willingness to change. So when I started to think about the word change, um, and I thought about like the season we're in right now, we're in the autumn season. And when we look outside, we can see so many things already beginning to change, right? The temperature is beginning to drop. The leaves are turning colors, right? We see the daylight, you know, it's shifting. We see the animals, even the animals are adapting to the seasonal change because it's crucial, why? For their survival. Some of the animals we see, they're migrating, right? During the season, then we have some animals, what they begin to grow their winter fur right, to adjust their bodies to the temperature, to, it's almost like a resistance, you know, to the weather, they protect themselves to survive the season, and to, as a resistance to the season, and then you find the animals that, of course, hibernate, you know, they prepare for the winter, during the winter season. So what about us? What about us? How are we responding to our seasonal change. And I started to make a comparison. Are we allowing our spiritual temperature to drop during the season? Mm. Are we lukewarm or are we still on fire for God? Do we change colors like the leaves are changing colors outside? Up one day, down the other. Um, in and out, up and down, changing colors, because you know that your altitude, your attitude will determine your altitude, right? What about our light? The daylight is, is, is shifting, it's getting darker now. What about our light? Is our light still shining bright? As bright as the diamonds, <laughs> thinking about that thing? You know, or is our light dimmer? How are we adapting to the change? Seasonal, and we're talking spiritual. Are we building up our winter coat through the word, praying, staying fortified, building up a resistance against every fiery dart of the enemy that would try to come up against us? Are we building it up? Or are we beginning to migrate, fall away, Unlike the animals, are we going into spiritual hibernation? 
Is this a time where, that we should be asleep? So the nature understands, right? And nature responds, the animals understand and the animals respond. So all of these examples, these examples gave me a new perspective about new beginnings because I realized that what we tend to do is we tend to respond with the change instead of responding for the change. So when we do that, what, what, it, what that means is when we respond with the change, we fluctuate up and down, right? We lose that momentum. We lose that spiritual altitude. But when we respond for the change, what? We maintain the momentum. We build ourselves up. We continue to ascend. We continue to stay up. And we don't allow the seasonal change to shift us from staying ascended, correct? The animals, like I said, they know how to adapt to the seasonal change because it's crucial for their survival. The same, and you know, with us, of course, I'm not talking about the natural because when it gets cold, we know how to respond to the season too, right? We start pulling out our sweaters, we start pulling out all of our heavy, heavier gear, our jackets. We start pulling out all the boots, right? The scarves. So we know how to respond naturally. But what about spiritually? So I thought about how God sometimes will shift things around us because we refuse to shift and to move when he tell us to move. So then the things around us begin to irritate us and agitate us and we begin to you know get frustrated because all we see and feel is the pressure when it's God like I think prophetess was saying one time that sometimes we start blaming God saying well, God why am I going to why am I feeling all this pressure what why the heavy adversity God is trying to get your attention we we so quick to point the finger and we start um, coming up against the enemy, rebuking the devil, but we don't think that maybe it's God trying to get my attention in this season. So maybe that's why so many things is pressing up against me, coming up against me, all these adversities. It's not always the devil. So sometimes, like I said, when that happens, we begin to shrink back. We begin to slow down because we feel that pressure. When is God saying, no, it's time to shift. It's time to get back in that clock. We'll be supposed to stay in the consecrated place, but sometimes we have to be reminded we need to remain there a little longer. Like Prophet is saying, two hours, <laughs> 40 minutes, we need to remain there a little longer. We need to take more time with God. We need to leave that familiar place, that comfort zone. It's time to ascend. It's time to speak, and it's, it's time to move. It's time to shift gears. So we don't realize sometimes that when we choose to stay in that place of stagnation, what happens is sometimes we can miss the shift. We can miss when God is ready to spring us forth. So what do we do? What do we do right now? We are to prepare for the shift. How do we do that? See, when we read Isaiah 43 and 18, I saw um, what I got out of it. It's like God was showing us the way we think and the way we respond. He said, don't think about the past. Don't think about what used to be. Don't think about how things used to be. Don't even consider it, he said, because I'm about to do a new thing. I'm about to shift you in a whole different way. So you can't figure out God. God moves in ways that we cannot see, and he loves to hide himself so that we don't know which way he's going to go. He don't, we don't know how he's going to open the door. We don't know which way he's going to make the way. He said, I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm going to do it. You can't see. I'm trying to get you to come up so you can see. You know, it's just like the eagles. That's what they do. They ascend up and they go above the storm. And they allow the storm to carry them the, the winds to carry them through the storm. And, and, and you know, when we're up in and we're ascended to a spiritual place, 
We don't have time. The thing, life is going to happen. Things are going to happen. Things are going to shift. But when you're in a certain place in God, you, it's like you don't have time to be worrying about all of those things. God said he's going to take care of me. He said he's going to provide. You got to be able to know what's on the, the, what the word says. And we got to decree and declare it every single day. We got to look that storm in the face. and we, Sometimes you got to speak to the storm. And you got to remind yourself. You know, I call it, <laughs> once in a while, you got to get, get up in the mirror. I call it mirror moments. You got to have mirror moments sometimes and you got to talk to yourself and you got to do whatever you got to do to build yourself up, build that winter coat, do what you need to do to stay fortified in God, stay in the word, repeat the word, rehearse the word, continue to meditate on his word. When all those things begin to shift, stay in that ascended and accelerated place where God is calling us to and don't shrink back. Don't look back. Don't become like the animals, don't start hibernating, falling asleep. <laughs> you know, don't start drifting away, slowing down, losing your momentum. But we have to shift and we got to stay there. Prepare for that shift and make room for the new. Make room for what God is about to do in your life, how, where he's about to shift you. So it's not about how he's going to do it. And it's not about when he's going to do it. Just as long as we know that God is going to do it, he's going to make the way. So no matter how dried up your season is right now, no matter what it is that where you are, you got to know, you got to know in your knower, as they say, what God says. And you got to stand on his word. You got to keep going. You got to keep pushing, keep trusting, stay busy for God, stay in his face. Until the until God transitions you there. So I'm talking about new beginnings. Now then I begin to think about, and I'm just about to. I just want to leave those thoughts with you. I thought I began to think about um, thinking about new beginning. I started to think about how oftentimes people wait until the beginning of the new year to start something new, right? You know, they start thinking about, oh, I, I gotta do a weight loss plan or got to start a new vision board. You know, we start thinking about new, you know, Bible reading plans and making a whole big old list on some things that we desire to achieve and that we desire to, to, to do for the following year. We always wait till the, the new year to start something new. And, and oftentimes what happens is we make that long list. And even though we may have good intentions, of achieving that list and those goals, somewhere down the line, that list becomes nothing more than a wish list that never came into reality. And it's the truth. Why is that? It's because we got stuck in transition. Because we didn't want to go through the process. Because a lot of the things that we write down, we expect it to happen just like that, and it's not. It's not going to happen like that. We got to, there's a requirement on our half. We got to put in the work. And it's, it's about letting go of the old and embracing the new, right? It's about preparing for that transition, for that new place where God wants to transition us. So, and it sounds like a cliche. Sometimes we, we hear it all the time. We got to be able to trust God even though we cannot trace God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter three, trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not into your own understanding, in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. So we do, that's what we have to do. We gotta trust God in this season and know that where God wants to shift us, we gotta know that it, it's, he's gonna do it, but we gotta do our part. We can't lose our focus, and begin to um, focus our mind on everything else other than where God has us. And I don't know about you, but I'm not waiting till the new year. I'm ready right now. I'm going to stay where he's telling me, you know, and I'm going to do what he's telling me to do right now. Because a lot of times, you know, we get to that place where 
we, we think we know and we don't. We have to know that God, he's not going to come back on his word. When, when he speaks a thing, he's going to perform it. He said, I will do a new thing. How many really believe that? So when, tra- when you're in your place of transition, how do you respond? Do you shrink back? Do you fear? You know, do you hesitate? Or do you jump? Do you step out of the boat? And so next week, I'm going to talk. I want you to meet me back, and we're going to talk a little bit more on, and that's going to be on episode one about um, stepping out of the boat. And I'm so excited about, um, amen. (laughs) I'm so excited about this new podcast because (laughs) talking about stepping out of the boat, I'm not going to go too far into that, but, you know, this this whole new move for me was, a big challenge in a sense because it's way outside my element to me y'all know me i'm i like to work on the back side i like to work behind the scenes doing my little content and things like that i'm good i love to serve i'm good <laughs> but this right here you know how many know i you have to obey the word the, the voice of the lord and i i'm not gonna lie i lingered for a little bit you know i hesitate a little bit but when it's time to move when it's time to shift you gotta move you gotta shift can't miss that um that that new thing god wants to release in your life um because he will pass you by (laughs) because who you know there's so many that god so many things god wants to do and we have to be ready for it you know the harvest is plenty of the labors are few in number and i just encourage you i hope this whatever i said today it wasn't a lie it was just an introduction You know, we're going to go in more detail on next week, but I just wanted to just lay a little foundation so that you kind of have a feel of where we're going and please support. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, when when everything populates, I'll go ahead and share the link so that um, you can maybe, you know, replay this or you can look at the live. Um, It's a podcast. It's not going to be a live every single episode, but once in a while I will pop in here and I'm just so excited for all of you who have joined. Thank you, Faith. Thank you, Janaya. Thank you, Carla, for coming in. And, and all those. And thank you, Daddy. Hi, Daddy. Um, who's come in to join me on today. And um, I know, like I said, a lot of people might be busy and working, but hopefully they'll catch the replay. Y'all be blessed today. Have a blessed day. I love you. And I will, I will talk to you guys soon. I love you. <laughs>